Hello, I'm John Aller, and I want to talk in this segment about the three books featured here on my website. I was recruited to come to the University of Louisiana by one of my former doctoral students and by Dr. Ray Odemont to build a new PhD program emphasizing theoretical semiotics. That's a mouthful. What it means is theories of sign systems of all kinds. I'd become interested in the mystery of autism some years earlier, thanks in large part to uh, Dana Roscoe, one of my collaborators at the University of New Mexico. In 2001, at a meeting of the Board of Regents, sitting next to Dr. Ray Odemont, I got the unanimous authorization to launch the new PhD program. We began by applying the general theory first to uh, language development in the book uh, referred to as Milestones, Normal Speech and Language Development Across the Lifespan, and uh, secondarily in uh, uh, cases, it's an encyclopedic work, uh, applying uh, general theory of science to communication disorders across the lifespan, published in 2010, and then finally to autism, uh, the mystery thereof, in the book Autism, the Diagnosis, Treatment, and Etiology of the Unde Undeniable Epidemic. Much of the work has involved logical mathematical reasoning grounded in proofs showing that all sign systems are utterly dependent on the sort found in ordinary true narrative representation, such as the statement that uh, New Orleans uh, saints, we'll call them the Louisiana saints probably from here on, on January 24, 2010, defeated the Minnesota Vikings in order to win the right to play in the Super Bowl in Miami on February 7, 2010. You know, I wasn't born in Louisiana, but I got here as soon as I could, and I'm glad that I came here in 1997. I remember thinking as I flew over the state that it was the emerald of the South, and I now think it's the emerald of the whole nation. Uh, Louisiana, by the way, has been rated as one of the happiest states to live in, probably in part because of the sunshine, in part because of the friendly people and the wonderful uh, music and all of the other things that characterize our beautiful state. It's even characterized that way by the CDC, which was agreed to by Joe Mercola. Uh, Joe doesn't often find himself in agreement with the CDC, but in this case he was, and I am too. Uh, also interesting, Lafayette's been rated as one of the best cities in the world to live in, and those of us who live here in Lafayette think it's the best place to live in Louisiana, for sure. Lafayette also is the home of the University of Louisiana with its main campus here, and has become one of the most desirable places in the world to get an advanced degree, especially if you want to tackle the abstract theory of general semiotics. I remember one guy at the University of New Mexico who said he was dropping out of our linguistics program there because, as he put it, he couldn't climb the transformational tree. But not to worry. If you come to the University of Louisiana, we now take undergraduates through a series of courses leading to the very frontiers of research in the general theory of signs as applied to communication disorders, disease conditions, and related problems. With all of that in mind, I want to talk a little bit about each of the three books. First, The Milestones Project. It's important to realize that if we don't understand how normal speech and language develops, it's going to be impossible to understand, to diagnose, and to treat uh, disorders of communication effectively. In our Cases book, based on a richer, deeper, more coherent general theory of signs, it was possible to reclassify disorders based on this general theory of signs, starting with bodily conditions and diseases, from the bottom up, genetic, epigenetic, biochemical, and so on, all of them involving communication breakdowns at some level. And in fact, every disease condition in existence involves some kind of communication breakdown. We move upward then to sensory disorders, blindness, deafness, uh, motor disorders, including everything from cerebral palsy to stuttering. It was uh, cerebral palsy that Dr. Campbell referred to in his uh, video of the baby in the womb, uh, pointing out that if we are able to see what's going on in there through his uh, 4D uh, ultrasound technique, we'll be better able to diagnose disorders before they occur, and in fact to do the kind of surgery that Bruner did on the Armas child that's also 
well documented in our uh, books. Um, moving on from motor disorders such as cerebral palsy and stuttering, we deal with linguistic, cognitive, and social disorders across the entire spectrum including mental retardation, autism, Alzheimer's, and so forth. The autism book is mainly concerned with etiology at its basis, but it offers advances in diagnosis and treatment as well. Families are absolutely besieged by this autism epidemic, and when 50% of the kids are severe, the idea that this epidemic is uh, something that uh, was simply unnoticed in the past fails as a theory precisely because it's impossible not to notice a kid who can't talk and doesn't isn't able to perform normal motor tasks like you know tying his shoes, getting to the bathroom, uh, uh, using the toilet. These kinds of things are not uh, something you can hide. We know that, that uh, toxins and disease agents have in some cases interacted not only to produce the disease or the disease condition, but actually to even kill a child and produce uh, sudden infant death syndrome. Innovations include 1,800 multiple choice items, 600 per book, 50 per chapter, there are 12 chapters in each book based on the number of chapters you can easily cover in a college semester. Material is completely integrated with PowerPoints. A student teacher manual is offered with each book with all resources made as accessible to the teacher and student as possible. Internet multimedia resources are presented in effectively expanding the classroom to incorporate the whole world. In all of the books, we've been blessed with the support and collaboration of literally hundreds of colleagues and collaborators worldwide. In our reference list, we cite several thousand researchers and more than 2,000 references. Among them, there are a few that I need to mention here. At the top, front and center, is Dr. Stuart Campbell of Create Health Clinic fame in London. Dr. Campbell brought to world the ultrasound applications that enable us to see babies developing in the womb in four-dimensional moving pictures. He was the first to show the world how babies take steps in the womb before they're two inches tall and how they can smile before birth. He believes as we do that the fetal smile and the infant smiles thereafter are typically indicative not of gas pains but rather of contentment and security. I must also mention Dr. Robert Titzer, the psychologist who taught his daughter Alika to read at nine months and showed that any normal child could do as much the child can read before can read words with comprehension before they're able to say them. Reading isn't turning printed form into speech. Reading is turning printed form into meanings. Inadvertently in doing so, he fulfilled a prediction of the general theory of signs, in particular the theory of abstraction, showing how and why it's possible for any normal child to learn to read printed words with comprehension before they can walk or talk. He also confirmed the theory of one of my former doc students at UCLA, Dr. Stephen David Krashen, that comprehension must precede production. It was Dr. Battle who first brought our team of co-authors in touch with both Dr. Campbell and Dr. Titzer. In effect, those researchers gave us access, uh, just gave us access to all of their work. In addition to them, we received materials and support from Dr. Fritz Lorscheider, Naweed Syed, Dr. David Kennedy, Dr. Andrew J. Wakefield, and the list goes on. I must also thank the Sertoma Club of Lafayette and Dr. Ray Odoma for helping to sponsor the International Conference on Autism Spectrum Disorders in the spring of 2007. Finally, it's essential to thank the parents and the children with autism who've inspired the work. No one has done more than Stan Kurtz, who donated the video documentation about his son Ethan, who was the source of inspiration for Jenny McCarthy's recovery of her son Evan, and all that has followed from her work. And thanks also to the students, Melissa Falks, uh, Heidi Kidder, Sarah Stutz, many others, who contributed insights, references, and their own experience to the enrichment of us all.